And if the Bengals do that, Thomas, I am telling you right now that the Bengals will win the Super Bowl next year. Believe it or not, for the, f- for the first time in a long time, the Cincinnati Bengals are not a mess. And uh, they, they have got a real opportunity here to capitalize on what was just an, an incredible season where they you know, like met pretty much every single one of my expectations going into it, which which never happens. You never go into a season like having like, well, they could do this, 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 and this if they just do this, 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 and this. And the, they actually did all that, Thomas. And yeah, then they yeah, actually yeah. did everything that I thought that they were capable of doing. I was like, holy crap. Like it's it, it's so rare that they act that that you know you say that a team can do this if they you know only get their heads out of their asses, and then they actually do it. So they have a real opportunity right now to build off of that and to run it back with most of the same you know guys. We're gonna need to replace a few guys here and there. Um, I've got a uh, I, I've got a uh, breakdown of like my initial thoughts on the off season. Uh, coming out that's going to be my next main video on uh, my youtube channel so you might want to go check that out but just a little bit of a preview i think it'd be a really good idea um to like the the Bengals got like what was it an estimated 57 million dollars in cap space um so once you pay trey waynes uh not not trey waynes once you cut trey waynes and then you pay jesse bates um and then you bring back a couple other guys and then focus the vast majority of your resources on absolutely overhauling that offensive line. I'm talking bring in Teron Armstead, but you don't stop there, man. I'm talking about ten, bringing in, you know, Lincoln Tomlinson, you know, maybe Orlando Brown, uh, you know, you know, bring in bring in Ben Jones to shore up the center position, and then you know Trey Hopkins can be your backup. And you feel really good if Trey Hopkins is the backup. The starter, you're kind of like, oh, he's a little inconsistent. I'm not really sure what's going on. But as the backup, you're like, I can handle that. Um, you know, you, uh, you you bring in a uh, you, you bring in, let's say, you know, t- like I said, Teron Armstead or Orlando Brown or somebody like that. Um, you you bring them in to be the left tackle, and then you know Jonah Williams, you can move him over to right tackle. And then you've solved both tackle thing. You you solved both tackle positions, and you know Jonah Williams you know, is a fairly good uh, left tackle, but he's not a great left tackle. He just he he looks great because every single other player on the Bengals offensive line has been absolute garbage. So mm-hmm. so if 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 you move Jonah Williams over to right tackle, I think that that utilizes his skill set a little bit better. And then you get somebody like I said, great like Orlando Brown or Teron Armstead to come in and shore up that left tackle position. And then suddenly, if you re-sign Riley Reef, you can push him in to uh, guard on the inside um, and, you know, shore that up a little bit. Maybe we bring him back Quentin Spain. And then suddenly this is a Super Bowl winning roster. And if the Bengals do that, Thomas, I am telling you right now that the Bengals will win the Super Bowl next year if they, uh, if they, if they overhaul their offensive line in free agency. And then, you know, I'm not sure how much money you have. Maybe you have some money to go get like a cornerback or two. Um, you know, probably probably no more starters after you put all that kind of mon- money into the uh, in, in the offensive line. But then you have the opportunity to do something you didn't last year, and that's invest in the defense in a draft perspective. So you're in, so you're doing the opposite of what you did last year. You invest in the offense and free agency, and you invest in the defense in the draft. And mm-hmm. I think if they do that. They will win the Super Bowl next year. Okay. I mean, honestly, I mean, if you had offensive line, you ought to be if you had a better offensive line, you ought to be the round. Well, that 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 that's kind of my thought process. You know, this was a Bengals team that wasn't supposed to do anything this year, that made it to the Super Bowl and came within two seconds at the end, Thomas. If if Joe Burrow had, had two extra seconds to find Jamar Chase. He would, we would have won the Super Bowl. And so that's all I'm saying. If they spend a ton of money on the offensive line, I guarantee you we probably win more games than we did this year. We might be the number one seed in the AFC. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I, kind, of, I kind of wonder um, if uh, maybe Jesse Bates was playing with a little bit of injury this year. Because, um, I, I mean, 
you notice that like i i know i know there was some th- talk about how he uh about he was maybe playing a little distracted through most of the season um, because he had that uh, contract extension, you know, thing. And, you know, maybe he wasn't playing up to his standards because he was, you know, thinking about the money a little bit too much. Um, but I, I wonder, was he maybe playing through a little bit of an injury too? Because, I mean, you know, by the time they got to the postseason, that dude was on fire. Sure. I, I mm-hmm. like, I mean, you, you want to talk about a guy who absolutely earned – every single penny that he's about to get paid, whether it be the Bengals uh, signing him to like a long-term extension. And by the way, I've, I've heard that the Bengals are close right now on a uh, $14 million a year extension for Jesse Bates. So mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll, we'll see if that actually um, turns out to uh, bear fruit, but it was looking like there for a minute, Thomas, that the Bengals and Jesse Bates were not going to come to terms on a uh, deal like that because Jesse Bates was not having a very good year. But like I said, the second the playoffs came in, he, he if, if there was anybody who's like individually responsible for the Bengals making the Super Bowl, Jesse Bates is probably at least like, you know, one of the top five. So, I mean, I, maybe not making the playoffs. You know, I think they made the playoffs in spite of Jesse Bates a lot of times this year. But from 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 wild card round to the Super Bowl, Jesse Bates made a huge impact. So, you know, the, um, I, I think the, uh, the 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 number I heard thrown around was um, five years, seventy million dollars. Um, now, and and now nothing is confirmed. By the way, this is just this is just a uh, a, a source that I've heard. Um, saying that that's what the uh, Bengals and Jesse Bates are currently basically kind of coming to a place on. Um, and and if, that, if that's the case, that's really good news because I think that's about $4 million a year short of what Jesse Bates was probably worth. Wow. I think, uh, I th- I think Jesse Bates probably could have um, made the argument that he should be the highest paid safety in the league the, uh, right now. And he's, if really he's gonna good. take 14 million. That's actually a little bit of a deal. He's really good. He's really good. He's really good. Take it, if y'all get him on a deal with a discount, go for it. Cause like that's that's the hard part of that defense.